Welcome to Views on the News with a single panel member. <laughs> hey, one of the best panel members. Absolutely. The cream has risen to the top. <laughs> so, Dr. Ty Wells, welcome. Happy to be here. Uh, great. Excellent. Now, we're going to take a look back at um, stuff that happened the week before this one that's just gone. And I, I know you'll be interested in an article about the Mormon Church. Okay, let's go for it. Right. American Christianity. Let's go for it. Actually, this one is Australian. Oh, yeah. they made it all the way to Australia. Well, then I should I should be a slightly facetious and just say white people Christianity. Go for it. <laughs> so, in Australia, the Mormon Church has been using a shell company to evade paying tax. Okay. <laughs> you call that news? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they set up this shell company in 2012, mm. and it's enabled them to accumulate exemptions of tax worth hundreds of millions of dollars that aren't lawfully available to members of other religions. All right. Let, let me tell you why I'm just slightly not shocked by that, at least from America, because in America, we have this weird thing called separation of church and state, which sounds in practice like it makes sense. However, has been contorted into this really unusually unjust practice of churches having influence on taxpayers, having influence on private sector, having influence on school systems, because they don't have to pay a property tax, which is used to support school systems, yet they yeah. can continue to build, they can mm. continue to influence their congregation, influence politicians, lobby for their self-interests, and continue to, have represent, continue to have representation without any taxation whatsoever. So mm. to, be, yeah. to have a, a story where in some parts of the country, it's actually newsworthy when uh, a, a religion has found some way to avoid paying taxes is, <laughs> is both so saccharine to, to my perspective, but also in some way a, a wake-up call for how 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 weird things are over here. I'd love to be able to see a place where, you know, if you're going to have representation, you get taxed for it. Um, and there shouldn't be any special excuses for it because, you know, I think ta a lot of taxes could be drawn from from religion in particular and, and to it's benefit. Business, it. Isn't it? So it should be taxed. Yeah. yeah. So... The, the situation is different in Australia because, you, you know, the, the Mormon church has tithing and, yeah, yeah. and, and, mm -hmm. and accepts donations. Mm. And yep. in Australia, neither of those are tax deductible. They're supposed to pay 10% of that income to the government, right? Wow. What they did was they rooted it through a charitable trust in order to be able to keep a hundred percent of that money to themselves. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, the, the reason it's news is because they've been investigated <laughs> and somebody has said these activities could be in breach of Australian tax laws. Yeah, if they ever needed to figure out how to not pay taxes, just talk to like any Australian millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> most of whom are in the US. Yes. Yeah, I would say most yeah, I would say most of these strategies are are fairly well known. This is not it's it's the same book. Hmm. If anything, uh, a Mormon pastor could say, Oh, I was blessed with this idea from my my millionaire tithing friend over here. <laughs> so moving to the US. You may remember earlier this year, the Southern Baptists, they, they held a convention and during which they announced that uh, any branch of the Baptist church that had 
women in the role of pastor right. would be expelled because you can't do that. And they actually expelled a, a Californian church, um, the the View Church in Menifee, California, for okay. having yeah. fem female pastors. Okay. Well, not the View Church. Everybody loved the View Church. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what's happened is there's a subgroup of the, of the Southern Baptists known as the African-American Southern Baptists. Okay. Okay. And they are in favor of having women pastors. So they, I think they call themselves the National African-American Fellowship. And they said, many of our churches assign the title pastor to women who oversee ministries of the church under the authority of a male senior pastor. Oh, that's For interesting. Example, children's pastor, worship pastor, discipleship pastor, and so on. So. The, the Baptist church are in conflict with themselves. Hmm. I always wonder about the power of a body like that. Is it the same thing as saying, you know, it, uh, here's my, here's my, um, here's my uh, uh, I, example. Uh, right now it's summer in U.S. and we have a lot of fairs and rodeos in the area neck of the woods in Tennessee where I'm at. And the weird thing is there are a lot of different options of what kind of fair or rodeo you want to go to. But every one of them says, we're an award-winning fair or we're an award-winning rodeo. And I always wonder, like, who gives out the reward? Because if does that mean you got first place and you got first place and you got first place? Like, who's winning out the awards? Is it just you guys or is, it a, is there an independent? Is this an objective criteria I can look at or is it just Alyssa? Where, where, where are all the non-winners? Right, right, right. So when someone says the governing body of Baptist says you're not a thing, but then there's another group that's like, no, we're a thing. <laughs> like, okay, then what's the who what kind of what's the true power of any group saying you can't do this and you're banished? They're still gonna be there. The building's still gonna exist there. So yeah. mm -hmm. why can't you just get along, you know? Figure yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. If only you had a book to figure that out with. So Staying in the U.S., we've got, mm. uh, again, it's a, a news item which has reared its ugly head again, because you may remember that the Jehovah Witnesses in Pennsylvania are under investigation for having uh, child abuse uh, happening. And oh. they, they found five more people who have raped or molested children as young as four. Wow. I mean, bloody hell. There's no excuse for that. No. So uh, apparently in, in this investigation, critics have said that the Jehovah Witness elders have treated child sexual abuse as a sin rather than as a crime. Hmm. And they've kept it in house, you know? Well, yeah. Yeah. I can't. So in my mind, I can't imagine a worse crime than the abuse of a child. I mm. like I understand murder is a thing. I yeah, and there's hate crimes, too. But mm. it's one of those crimes that propagates itself, destroys not only an entire life, but causes victims to become offenders. It's like one of the weird, the weirdest psychological damaging, most psychologically yeah. damaging thing you can yeah. do to a child is yeah. to take that security they have away from them mm. before they can fully develop into a person such that yeah, yeah. the only way they deal with that trauma typically and, and demonstrably through practice is by yeah. reoffending on other children and yeah, yeah. well they, if, they, had they had it done to them so they think it's normal right and so if you come up with an institution that has that problem that's not a oh we just need to arrest jerry that's a that's a systemically there's a situation that's going to keep happening. It's going to keep happening until we can completely take all this venom out once yeah. and for all. Mm -hmm. And if we don't proactively go through that measure, every single time it happens and we only address that one case is not going to solve that problem. It's going to just yeah. essentially put a Band-Aid on mm -hmm. this, this institutional yeah. acceptance that, oh, it's just a thing that happens and we can pray it away. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were and talking before. Oh, go for it. it. It's it's truly horrible. I mean, listen to this. 
Mm. One person said she was raped 50 or more times between the ages of 7 and 12. Wow, that's By so a church member who was 18 when the assaults began. I mean, it, you can't get worse, really, can you? No, you can't. And to to that end, I would say you can't i wish from a governing body they can step in and say you can't oh you know we have like a freedom of religion so yeah i understand that this gets touchy but in my head if you demonstrate harm to children whatever rights you are claiming to have from a constitutional point of view don't exist or yeah. don't matter and we should be we should be in the interest of protecting and re reducing needless harm particularly of children first and yeah. foremost and then when you get your track record together, you should be able to go. Like you, if you have a sex offender history, you shouldn't be able to teach. Like we have that in place. If you yeah. are uh, like a repeat drunk offender, we can take away your license. Yet mm. if you're from an institution where child abuse is rampant and you haven't done anything to address it, aside from move people around or pray yeah. it away, you shouldn't be able to congregate with children anymore. We should be able to say, you can you can be your religion, but you can't be around kids anymore. We now have a restraining on order on you for yeah. children being in this organization, period. Right? Like fix that and then we'll come back. But until then, we are making sure that the interests of people are are being met. Um, That's certainly the case in this country with regard to teachers. Hmm. If you're a sex offender, a convicted sex offender, you're on the list, the register of sex offenders, and you'll never get another job as a teacher. Right. As you shouldn't. No. Hmm. Okay. So, you may remember the 6th of January, uh, what was it, three years ago now, Capital Rioters. Oh, yeah. that was the 6th of, Jan 6th of January. You said 3rd? What no, did you sixth. say? Oh, sixth. Okay. Sixth. Okay. Sixth. okay. Okay, okay. So there was one particular rioter, the QAnon shaman, who was f famous because he had a antlers, well, he had horns on his head, face paint, fur around him. So he was very noticeable, okay? Okay. And he, he was arrested. His name is Jacob Angeli Chansley. He's known as Jake Angeli. And when he was in court, uh, accused of this, this um, activity, he seemed like a changed man. He said, I am truly, truly repentant for my actions. Because repentance is not just saying you're sorry. Repentance is apologizing and then moving in the exact opposite direction of the sin that you committed. Mm. In retrospect, I would do everything differently on January the 6th. And the judge of this court case called his apology the most remarkable I've heard in 34 years. And instead of sentencing him to the, the uh, maximum sentence of 20 years, he gave him 41 months now it's a year and a half later more than a year and a half later and he's out of jail came out early for good behavior and his remorse is gone now he says regrets only weigh down the mind they're like sandbags on a hot air balloon i so in my opinion i'd say um there's only one person that really needed to go to jail for that. And it wasn't so much the, the people in the cosplay. It was, <laughs> and until that's rectified, he may, he may the stress of There's, another potential election cycle where that yeah. person could, you know, return to office, which would be not only, not only is that a scary thing, but it just distracts us from the more dangerous threats of the people who are just as crazy, but can, keep it together long enough, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the more flamboyant wacko should have been in jail. And um, yeah. there's still time. Might happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's still a time to act. But um, it's it's a weird time to be, how do I put it? 
Um, I don't want to know anything more about that guy is what I'm saying. Uh, well, as, soon, as soon as he walked out of jail, I, I wish no reporter ever gave him a lick of attention for the rest of his life. He has no further legacy. It's, it's not like he's going to come out with an award-winning book or like become a fireman oh, yeah. and we care. It's like he's done. That's the exact. He will be known for that. doesn't really matter what else happens afterwards. So he can well, say whatever he wants afterwards. It's His legacy has been sealed. I'm willing to move on and figure out what we can do to keep something like that from happening again rather they, than the use of There's money to it. be made. There's money to be made yet. He he's a, got a public profile, and writing a book might be the next thing he does. Uh yeah. So believe it or not, his audience doesn't like writing reading books. <laughs> 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 and I'm putting that succinctly. So well, like, yeah. But it's, there's it's, ghost. There's ghost writers. So maybe there's ghost readers as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as there's money, there's a market, right? Yeah. But in my opinion, I think um, uh, the damage has been done. The legacy exists. Deal with it. That's what you signed up for when you show up to DC dressed as a goat. Uh, let's just move on and try to rectify that situation from ever happening again, right? Maybe there's some truth to what he was saying with regard to, you know, moving on. Let's move on and figure yeah. out what we can do to stop that from happening. Yeah. Well, I, I hope you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I feel pretty good on that one. Good. So. Here we go back to Australia. There's a book. You mentioned writing a book. Okay. There's a contentious book in Australia. It's called Welcome to Sex. Okay. okay. And it is co-authored by a Dolly doctor who is an adolescent health expert and Dr. Melissa Kang. Uh, oh, oh, she's that's her proper name. So she's been... I think she's been on TV as the Dolly Doctor because she's, you know, a young, uh, good-looking woman, and so she and feminist. I'm gonna have to look her up now. <laughs> Dolly Doctor, Dolly, Do Doctor. Yeah, Australia. Australia, Australia. Mm. Okay, keep going. Australia. Okay, so. Uh, it, she's written this with feminist writer Yumi Steins, and the, the idea is to help adolescents come to terms with the difficulty of growing up. You know, welcome to sex. Okay. There's, a, there's a store, a chain of stores called Big W, mm -hmm. and they've, take, they've taken it off their shelves because uh, they've had abuse multiple incidents of abuse at the store team members have caused them to remove it from the shelving in order to for safety of their staff members they're fearful that that the team and the customers will be attacked so they're only going to sell this book online in future okay 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 um okay has there been attacks there's been abuse. What does abuse mean? What does that mean? Um, angry people making threatening gestures in you know real life in in the store and causing a ruckus. Okay. Man. Abusive behavior has the definition of it has changed, I can imagine. Uh, okay. I've always considered that to be something more physical, like People have opinions and they didn't, if they didn't, if they knock over a stand, arrest them. And that's, I mean, we have, we have client, we have ways to protect people from that. If people are upset, they have a right to be upset. If people want to be upset, they can be, people will complain. That's not new. Uh, and if you can still sell the book, then you can sell the book. But if people are saying, oh, I have a book and people don't like it in my back in my head, I'm hearing, I want to advertise my book by showing that it's not for the general population. And it's so extreme that yeah. we can only get this thing out to hands in the next 24 hours. If you order right now, if you order right now, you can get this book. Not even the, the people outside want it. Oh man, I'm getting so much abuse. Someone said they didn't like it. Oh, oh, I've been, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a survivor.
I'm a soldier <laughs> of the truth right now. You need this. It's almost the same thing that I'm hearing the goat guy do from uh, uh, the Q uh, <laughs> protester. If if someone wants to sell something, they can sell it. If they can still, if they can sell in the store, it still sounds like she can sell it in the store. It sounds like there's well, nothing. You can't sell it face to face. That's the thing, you see, because you might Who get can't? Who but, says she but, can't? Well, she, she, if, if it, someone gets in her face, they can get arrested, right? Well, there you go. But yeah. the, the thing is, uh, you can get it. If you're a prime customer, you can get it tomorrow, of course. Right. <laughs> but th this is the fourth book in a series on topics such as consent to sex. Yes. Yeah. So she's and already then, sold multiple books on this subject. I mean, Australia and, is not Iran. Like, we, like, I feel like. Oh, no, no, indeed. Yeah. And menstruation. But listen to this. Talk to me. The Women's Forum Australia. Okay. Which is a self-described think tank that focuses on anti-trans campaigning. Okay. They're the, ones, they're the ones that led the push to have the book banned from stores and libraries. And their chief executive, a woman called Rachel Wong, said... The problem with the book was that it was teaching sex to children. Okay. I mean, as as long as they are not um, burning down stores or actively harming, if they come up as a board meeting and come out with a proposal that says, we don't like this thing, which sounds like that's all they've ever did, boards can do that. I... This is not violent behavior. This is not, in my head, abusive behavior. This is just, you know, I can sign a petition and I can be upset over something. You're not going to make everybody happy. And it still sounds like she can sell the book. I don't see I don't see a problem here. We have protections in place, even on Australia, that says if someone gets in your face and they threaten you, you can arrest them for that. That's an, And if someone intends to harm you, you can arrest them for that. And if, you know, someone blocks you from rightfully selling something that you have a license to sell, copyright ownership of, you can you can sue them for it. Like yeah, all these protections are in place. I find like this is just a good way to sell the book, <laughs> drawing yeah. up more yeah. drama because I'm uh, these boards are always going to exist, and there's not going to be everybody that loves your book. But yeah. you can probably sell more if you can show that there's a exactly. tribalistic no, us for no them publicity mentality. is bad publicity, eh? Yeah, I, I refuse. I refuse to dial into this. I see. I see the market for what it is. <laughs> what, do you think, what, is what do you think of this woman, Rachel Wong? Do you think she wants to keep children ignorant about sex? Probably, but I mean, it's her own prerogative to do whatever she wants with her own kids and her own board. You know, like it's unfortunate that. She doesn't have as much of an open mindset as others, but in my mind, um, problems like that facilitate themselves out the room as we begin to expose more different cultures. And in my mind, and you're talking to an asexual here, like I, people can make that decision on their own. Um, it's important in my head. It'd just be important to know what the options were uh as earlier but if some people want to wait a little bit longer they can wait yeah. a little bit longer i just say don't victimize or menialize or marginalize people who are going down their own path with that and if someone says hey i don't want my kid to know about what sex or what what you know uh, uh a sexual act is until they're you know 16 or so or i don't want them to figure that out in a children's book they have every right to not buy that children's book and teach it to their kids like I don't but see I, a problem with any of these stories. As a former teacher, I can't condone keeping information from people. Okay. <laughs> that was a conversation stopper. <laughs> and, and, and no, I mean that that is that's one perspective to have in what I would hope to be a cornucopia of perspectives that even you would realize is it could be a nuanced point. And I never like to be absolute on any term. And I can definitely think there are some things that are beneficial not to be aware of when I'm still developing as a person and give myself time and proper context to properly interpret them when yeah. I'm older. But, you know, it's yeah. it's a push pull. And what I'm looking at is a situation where there's there's enough room for context here to understand a reasonable argument for why someone wouldn't want their kids to know about uh, yeah. maybe all the sex stuff in the book versus what the lady would propose is this is something that kids should know more. It's like, okay, cool. Well, then you make a book, release it. 
but allow parents to determine whether or not they want that book to be given to their kids. I think that's a fair compromise for everybody. Absolutely. And there is a time you wouldn't want to teach, um, like we were saying about abuse of children. Mm. You, would, you wouldn't want them to become aware at age four. Right. Yeah. Mm. Even if they could be potentially victims to it. Like there's a way that you want to, there might be a way, a better way to showcasing that than just a book that you just hand them or something that you see down the street. I can see, I can see the concern. I think there's just, it's a room for a bigger conversation. And mm. what all we need right now is just people to like reasonably approach that concept, concept without, mm. without as much dogmatic reactions to it. It's like, yes, it's sex. We know we don't like kids having sex for some people, but it's not like they're actively having sex. It's just a question of when's the right time to educate them. That could be a conversation yeah. worth having. We're not forcing it, but we are saying that it's a good conversation to have. Here are tools that can help you have that conversation look better, yeah. and we're just we're just allowing them to be available. Yeah, what we don't want is people to not know what the cause of babies is when mm. they are when they are fertile. That's what we don't want. Right. Anyway, moving on to you, you've, you're familiar with Chat GPT, of course. Yeah. Well. Uh, the religious people have seen the opportunities that it may offer them. Great. So listen to this. There's a, a former computer science student, name of Gold Branson, who has <laughs> turned, in, turned into a finance intern, and he wished that he'd had a, a resource that helped him as an evangelical Christian in Minnesota when he was young. So, about three months ago, he started work on BibleMate.io, which is a Christian chat GPT. Mm -hmm. So, interrogative minds who are looking for biblical answers to life's difficult questions can go to BibleMate.io and get text written for them. Yeah, what do you think of that? I'm happy that that exists. Uh, what we need is an enterprise of more Christians making more models to support their particular ideas so that the models exist in an objective space that can be tested independently. Uh, we brought this up in a, a, a former podcast call a while back of like, what would happen if Christians started making a biased chat GPT that only made them happy or said the answers that yeah. they wanted? And we were... The original intent was we want that to be the case because now we have more models that we can independently test against each other. And if we ask one model, hey, is it possible to walk on liquid water? Does the human foot have enough surface tension to break through that surface or not? And ChatGPT says, nope. And Bible GPT says, absolutely. But Bible <laughs> GPT 2 says, well, it depends. Like we can actually <laughs> test that and say, ah, oh, the answer is no and look objectively yeah. at who said what and be like, this gives us more accurate information about reality and you guys don't. And we can all well, clearly see that. The, the wouldn't, thing, wouldn't that be nice? But yeah. oh. this this version of chatbot, BibleMate.io, relies on the ever-growing database of sermons, books, and academic articles to inform the answers that it offers. And it refers to C.S. Lewis and William Lane Craig as well-respected scholars in this field. Okay, well, yeah, here's the thing. Have you gone to a sermon lately? No. <laughs> they haven't changed? They haven't changed? No, They're, no, no, sure. changed. Yeah, yeah. I remember the last sermon I went to was a few years back, actually, maybe even five years back. And no, maybe even four years back. And... Um, I only went there because Sunday Assembly, which is sort of like a gathering of atheists, uh, was, in, was in the next building next over. But I got mm. there about an hour early. And so there was mm. church and service. And I said, let me just let me just sit down and get sit in the pew. The pews felt the same way. I'm surrounded by yeah. people in sweaters that, you know, have this pride smile on their face when you walk up to them. <laughs> and stuff like that. I'm like, that's fine. That's fine. And the pastor's just doing his thing. And I'm like, I disagree off the first sentence and I'm just listening yes. and. Yes. This is the same. I'm not have not missed anything in all this time. Yes. It's the exact Go. same thing. Churning so, it out. Yep. what you are getting in difference between ChatGPT and maybe Bible GPT is quantity 
of information versus quality of information. So maybe yeah. one day, yes, chat or G Bible GPT will have more sermons in its database than chat GPT will ever have. So what? So what? It's the same unsubstantiated claims. It's the same rhetoric. And it's not drawing us any closer to a more realistic conclusion that's based yeah. on testable yeah. data. I am well, wholly for it because it's only going to further resolve an issue yeah. Christian dogmatic thinking. You'll love this bit. Listen, one of the favorite features of BibleMate.io is the explain it to me like I'm five tool. Mm. You type in a hard to understand theological concept and it dumbs it down to explain it as if you're a five-year-old kid. Right. That's a thing that exists even on ChatGPT. It's actually a proper red, a, a popular Reddit subgroup called Explain yeah. Like I'm Five, E-L-I-5. And mm -hmm. what I am not, I, what I, this is actually what's going on, just to give you a heads up. He's not making a brand new AI. He's basically made a client that talks to GPT and and filters the response to make it Probably. more clear. Yeah, that's yeah. it. It's what most people are doing. So a fun thing on Discord right now that's like the latest craze is if you've written a book or written a lot of papers or have an autobiography out, you can't or fan fiction, whatever, you can feed that all to ChatGPT in one conversation and say, respond in this Discord chat room as a chatbot as if you were me based on everything that I've typed above. And if you have enough comprehensive data that you fed ChatGPT, you're separate discord client when fielded a question inside discord which is just like this chat room will mm. will pull an answer from chat gpt format it as basic as if you are answering the question and then respond to that question as if it was you and you could have yeah. basically clients you can have an ai that's basically you and it's so easy to make you can do that in like 20 minutes but it could be really terrifying because the AI would be like, yeah, I remember that time when I was back in Salinas, California, when I went to where I was like high school and my babysitter's name was blah, blah, blah. And you're like, why do you know all these things about me? You're so not me. But yeah, uh, who knows? In the future, people may fall into the idea of like, I have a virtual self uh, uh, or maybe these companies already have these information anyway. But the main thing is th where everyone's sharing information, all this stuff that's going on is not a new thing. I yeah. could make a Bible GPT in about two hours or so like this is this is not new and anyone can make a website very quickly so mm, yeah, yeah. it's good i want more people to do it because that's science isn't about excluding people from expressing it's about testing what's been expressed right and so we can't do that until people actually put their their yeah. money on the line yeah so let you, it get out there have, you've got to have something to think critically about yeah so you'll love this, though, because we're going to the UK. Well, to England, in fact. Okay. The Archbishop of York, he has suggested that the opening words of the Lord's Prayer may be problematic okay. because of their patriarchal association. Our Father is problematic for those of us who experience difficulty with earthly fathers who may have been destructive and abusive and it's also difficult for for us who have been oppressed by the patriarchal grip on life what are they going to do uh i don't know what are they going to do this is your neck of the woods what do you think they're going to do <laughs> well they're arguing because there's an an alternative point of view by a canon Dr. Chris Sugden, who is chair of the conservative Anglican mainstream group. Mm. And she's she's point. Oh, he has pointed out that the Bible in the Bible, Jesus urged people to pray to our father. So he's saying, is the Archbishop of York saying that Jesus was wrong or that Jesus was not pastorally aware. It seems to be emblematic of the approach of some church leaders to take their cues from culture rather than scripture. Mm. And, and somebody on the other side, the Reverend Christina Reese, who campaigns for female bishops, 
said that the Archbishop of York has put his finger on an issue that's really live for Christians and has been for many years. The big question is, do we really believe that God believes that male human beings bear his image more fully and accurately than women? Mm. I mean, these are good questions. There you go. So they, they, they're stuck with this problem because we're supposed to be made in God's image and God has a capital H, he, and capital H, him, as his pronouns. So how can that apply to women? Yeah, it's weird, though, because, you know, the Bible also exists in China, and China doesn't have pronouns that work that way, you know? That's true. And, like, yeah. the Bible also exists in, I imagine not Af every African language has same similar pronouns that are, like, in, like that. Um so this is this is really I know as much as we want to say it's it's scriptural not cultural this is this is a problem that's steeped in the bias of a cultural understanding of how words work and yeah. we are applying this problem or even even if you think it's a non problem we are applying it because that's your bias that's your lens and yeah. so everything so, that we do is cultural you have to think about it that way absolutely um, so doesn't this cast doubt on the fact on the claim that the Bible is the word of God. It's obviously not. It's the word of men who are mm. applying the culture of their day. Well, that is what it is. It is what it is. But uh, it's an uncomfortable thing to realize, right? I think I think the the more pressing issue, at least for the Archduke or Archbishop of York, is still the idea of lack of women in their congregation and positions of leadership. And if you want to speak to the idea of a uh, harmful patriarchy, look no further than the leadership bias of your current establishment, right? Well, although you're right that there's not many women in the hierarchy, in the congregation, well, it's, most, it's mostly women and mostly right. old women. You go to any church that hasn't already closed, and there's probably seven people in the in the pews for a sermon, and five of them are women. And now, why other, is that? That's a bigger yeah. question, too. But yeah, I hear what you're saying. The the other two are men that have been dragged along by women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So finally, going to Texas. Okay? okay, Texas. Yeah. Now in Fort Worth. Okay. The uh, back in May, no, no, further, further back, 1998, the city allocated free advertisement spots to non-profits to promote their organization or any events, as long as they're open to the public, of common interest to the general community and held in Fort Worth. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So... They've got lampposts, and you're allowed to hang your banners on there, okay? Okay. For no cost. Yeah, yeah. So what happened was the uh, Metroplex atheists wanted to display adverts for their event, which is scheduled for August the 26th in the Fort Worth Botanic Gardens, and they were denied. Ah. Uh... Uh oh. <laughs> well, that's a problem. And the reason the reason they were denied by the assistant city manager William Johnson was because the event was non-compliant due to it not being of a magnitude to qualify. Mm, it's some well, that's unfortunate. It's like some people go out of the way to try to protect God without realizing, like, if you have to protect God, what is the God that you're trying to protect, basically, at that point? Like, why, let it go. Why does, yeah, like, why does he need you to stand up for him? You know, mm. like, if this is part of the plan, just let it happen. And uh, mm. you can pray it away and move on with your day. But to make mm. a point of, I will stop this, to make my Jesus points score higher. Well, mm. you know, you're only hurting other people and making yourself look less. 
you're 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 potentially breaking down the system that yeah. was meant to help everybody, which is what you know, more ridiculous. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So so there is now a federal lawsuit against oh, the city go. of Worth Good. that's been filed by the complaint has been filed by one Jeffrey T. Blackwell, who is a legal counsel for American atheists, and he says Free speech is free speech, whether or not the government likes that speech or certain members of the community object to it. Right. So what, watch this space. <laughs> Are you about to show a video? No. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I you said watch this face? Space, dot, dot, dot. I was ah, okay, you, okay. I was waiting you, for... I was waiting for a video drop. I'm sorry, buddy. No, no, no. I was, I was urging you to follow this news item because it's going to develop. Got it. Got it. Watch this space. No video, but we're staying tuned. Got it. I'm totally yes, down. Exactly. So on that bombshell, <laughs> I'm going to play the outro. And thank you very much for taking part, Dr. No, I enjoyed it. This is great. Great. Okay. Say goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Cheers. Was the Pope appealing for peace or was he praying for peace? Um, and, and the same applies to the Caribbean dragon. Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you, what do you have to say about that, guys?